Daily Minutes nummer 1526 met een uitzending voor vandaag, 19 januari 2019. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. This bulletin will be almost completely in English. Vandaag het nieuwsbulletin van de RSGB. Aan het eind van de uitzending is er data in FL Digi. Je moet echt RXID aanzetten, want het schakelt automatisch. Hello, this is Mike Marsh, G1IAR, and welcome to the TX News podcast of the GP2RS National News for Sunday, the 20th of January 2019, supplied by the Radio Society of Great Britain and brought to you by TX Factor. The news headlines from the RSGB this week showcase our hobby during British Science Week, prepare for Thinking Day on the air, and AMSAT celebrates 50th birthday. British Science Week runs from the 8th to the 15th of March and it's a fantastic opportunity to showcase radio communications in the 21st century to young people. The RSGB is encouraging clubs to develop relationships with their local school or community group. The theme for this year is journeys and ideas for activities could include the journey from Marconi to Wi-Fi or to Aris contacts or the journey of a radio wave from a transmitter to a receiver without wires. RSGB clubs are ideally placed to put on a local event and if your club already has a link with a local school, why not work with them to run an amateur radio related event during BSW? The Radio Communications Foundation is keen to sponsor such events and can provide radio kits to build. These have already been used in primary and secondary schools with great success. More information is available online at tinyurl.com forward slash gb2 RS hyphen zero one two zero A for Alpha. Thinking Day on the Air 2019 will take place over the weekend of the 16th and the 17th of February. A list of known stations is displayed on the station list page of the website guides-on-the-air.co.uk. There's a form on the page for stations to submit their details to be added to the list and an IO group for exchanging details or arranging skeds. Currently, as well as UK stations, guides and scouts are taking part from Canada, USA and the Netherlands. Please send in your station details via the website or you can do it via email to lizowl, that's all one word, lizowl at gmail.com. AMSAT's 50th anniversary will be celebrated with AMSAT DL special event call sign DL50 AMSAT. The station will be on the air from the Saxony on the Czech Republic border via satellites only and it will debut this weekend. Track the event on Instagram and live on Twitter with the hashtag Satellite Weekend. The latest versions of the UK ban plans have now been published. RSGB members will receive a copy within the February edition of the Rancom magazine and its information is freely downloadable as well from the RSGB website at rsgb.org slash ban plans. Two more 2018 RSGB convention videos are now available for members to view on the RSGB website. Convention favourite Ian White, Golf Mike 3 Sierra Echo Kilo, can be seen speaking about VHF balance, where he takes a critical look at some long-established methods for feeding Yagi antennas and identifying a new list of do's and don'ts for modern conditions. Ray Berlin Game Golf, Golf 4, Foxtrot Oscar November, discusses the pitfalls of learning Morse and the work of the German psychologist Ludwig Koch that Ray used in his freeware training software. Drawing on his own experience and over 10 years of feedback by users of his software, Ray offers practical advice on how you can move from simply working stations with a 5NNTU reply to effortless casual rag chewing with them. Go to rsgb.org slash videos to go check out these and many others. 
Looking ahead a little, it's the St. Patrick Award, and they're asking amateurs to come and celebrate on the air for the St. Patrick's Day event on the 17th of March. The award will be running over 48 hours from the 16th at 12 noon until the 18th at 12 noon to follow the worldwide celebrations. This year, a new digital radio award has been added covering such modes like FT8, DMR, D-Star, JT65 and Echolink. To claim it, you must have made at least 20 contacts with a registered St. Patrick's Day station. And if you'd like some more information about this, you can check it out online at stpatrickaward.webs.com. More than 80,000 contacts went into logs at the Youngsters on the Air Suffolk stations and others participating in December Yota Month, with most operations in IARU Region 1. The final tally included 46,989 on SSB, another 28,064 on CW, some 3,814 on FT8 and the rest on various other modes. This year, as many as 44 participating stations made 82,938 QSOs in December. You'll be able to read all about the events in the UK in the March edition of Radcom, and a full report can be read online at iaru-r1.org. There are a number of vintage radio and amateur-related e-books available for free download on the Project Gutenberg site. Among them is Letters of a Radio Engineer to His Son by John Mills. Written in 1922, in his letters, the author teaches all about radio telephony with simple explanations and contain only what is important in the radio of today and those ideas which seem necessary if you were to follow the rapid advance which radio is making. Check out the site online. You can get more information at gutenberg.org slash ebooks. That is your headline news. Now it's time for details of rallies and events for the upcoming week. The Horncastle Amateur Radio and Electronics Rally is on the 27th of January. It takes place at the Horncastle Youth Centre in Cagthorpe Buildings. That's on Willow Row in Horncastle. Postcode is Lima November 9, 6 Delta Zulu. The doors open at 10 in the morning and entrance is £2. Traders' tables are £5 per six-foot table and there's free car parking at the venue. The usual traders will be there and catering is also available on site. If you'd like some more details, get in touch with Tony, Golf 3 Papa Zulu Uniform. Do it via landline 01507 527 835 or you can do it via email to tony.nightingale at yahoo.co.uk and don't forget to get your event into radcom onto gb2rs and onto the rsgb website as well please send in your details as early as you possibly can do it via email to radcom at rsgb.org.uk and we need to know about four months in advance for radcom Next up, it's the DX News, and it comes from 425 DX News and other sources. Kilo Bravo 8 Yankee Romeo X-Ray will be active as 8 Papa 9 Charlie Alpha from Barbados. I owe to reference there November Alpha 021 until the 4th of February. It'll operate mainly FT8 on the 20 meter band, and you can QSL via Logbook of the World or via his home call sign. Sati. Juliet Echo 1, Juliet Kilo Lima, will be on the air as 9 Mike 6 November Alpha from Labuan Island, which is Oscar Charlie 133 in East Malaysia between the 24th and the 28th of January. Main activity will be on the 160 metre band, including participation in the CQWWCW 160 metre contest. QSL via Logbook of the World and Club Logs OQRS. Tino, Hotel India 3, Charlie Charlie and a group from the Lorna del Toro DX Club will be active as Hotel India 1 Lima Tango from Isla Beata. That's November Alpha 122 between the 20th and the 28th of January. They will be operating CW, SSB and digital modes and you can QSL via Whiskey 2, Charlie Charlie Whiskey. 
Matt, Delta Lima 4, Mike, Mike will be on the air as Papa 4 slash Delta Lima 4, Mike, Mike from Aruba, which is Sierra Alpha 036. That's going on between the 22nd and the 30th of January. He'll operate CW, SSB and FD8 with a focus on the low bands and pay special attention to Europe and Asia. He'll participate also in the CQWW 160m CW contest as Papa 40 Alpha Alpha. And if you get a contact, QSLs go via Club Logs OQRS or via Delta Lima 4 Mike Mike. And finally, Nobu Juliet Alpha Zero Juliet Hotel Quebec will be active as Tango 88 Papa Bravo from Core Raw, which is Oscar Charlie 009 in Palau between the 25th and the 28th of January. He'll focus on 160 metres CW, including participation in the CQWW 160 metre contest, QSL via Logbook of the World, or direct via Juliet Alpha Zero, Juliet Hotel, Quebec. Now it's the special events news and only one to mention this week. Worthing and District ARC will be running a special event station to commemorate its 70th anniversary this weekend using Golf Bravo 5 Whiskey Oscar Radio. The station will be on the air on all HF bands plus possibly 2 metres and 70 centimetres. And if you'd like some more details, check out the club website at WADARC, that's W-A-D-A-R-C dot org. .uk. And as ever, please send in your event details to radcom at rsgb.org.uk. As early as you possibly can, you'll get free publicity on GB2RS. You'll also get in the Radcom magazine and online as well. And do remember that UK special event stations must be open to the public, so our free publicity can really help make your efforts more widely known. Moving on to the contest news now. On Tuesday, it's the SHF UK Activity Contest. It runs from 19.30 to 22.30 UTC, using all modes on the 2.3 to 10 gigahertz bands, the exchanges, signal report, serial number and locator. Next weekend, from 2200 UTC on the 25th to 2200 UTC on the 27th, the CQ Worldwide 160m DX contest takes place. Using CW only, the exchange is Signal Report and CQ Zone, which for the UK is Zone 14. In addition, US and Canadian stations send their state or their province. Also next weekend, from 1200 on the 26th to 1200 on the 27th, the BARTG RTTY Sprint Contest will be held using RTTY on the 3.5 to 28 MHz bands. The exchange is simply the serial number. And finally, the UK 6 metre Group Marathon continues until the 31st of January using all modes on the 50 MHz band. The exchange is signal reports and locator. And finally now in the main news, it's time for the radio propagation report compiled this week by Golf Zero Kilo Yankee Alpha, Golf 3 Yankee Lima Alpha and Golf 4 Bravo Alpha Oscar on Friday the 18th of January. At the risk of sounding like a stuck record, or a stuck, stuck record, the sun remained spotless this past week with the solar flux index stuck firmly around the 70 mark. Geomagnetic conditions were mostly settled with a maximum planetary K index of 4, although on average it was usually much lower than this, around 1 or 2. Many are bemoaning the poor HF conditions at the moment and it's not actually surprising. Although there are openings up to 21 megahertz at times, the 20 meter band is more likely to bring you reliable DX contacts than the higher bands. We can't expect to see much action on 12 or 10 meters until the sporadic E season starts up again in early May. The lower bands are still throwing up some surprises though and transatlantic contacts on 160 metres are still worth chasing if you're equipped for top band. 80, 40 and perhaps even 30 metres might also bring you some DX during darkness. As always, we encourage you to use the online tools at predtest.uk and also propquest.co.uk to plan your activity. Next week, Noah predicts more of the same with the spotless sun and a solar flux index of around 71. Geomagnetic conditions should remain quiet until the 24th and the 25th, when material from a recurrent solar hole may push the KP index to 5, bringing the potential for aurora-like conditions and depressed maximum usable frequencies. 
Looking at uh, VHF and upwards now, there's unlikely to be much tropo this coming week. A key feature of the weather is an area of low pressure which drifts southeast across the country from Greenland on Sunday to Iceland and then Scotland and arriving over England by Wednesday. Looking at its origin, it will herald a spell of cold weather with a taste of winter for some areas. This might provide wintry showers in some places to give a chance of rain scatter on the gigahertz bands, but it's not a great opportunity. That leaves the last part of the week to consider after the cold winter low has moved away into the continent. Models suggest a return to a ridge of high pressure, some models stronger than others, but it will be building in dry, cold air, which is not good for creating a strong moisture contrast across the temperature inversion and thus not a great signal for tropo. So probably a flat field of the week regarding VHF and UHF weather propagation, but with the SHALESAT-2 geostationary transponder undergoing engineering tests as we write, I'm sure many of us will be focused on this and getting our dishes ready. The moon reached maximum declination on Friday morning and perigee is Sunday morning. So it is a good week for EME and that's your lot from the propagation team for another week. And that's all we've got for your GB2RS national news for the UK from around the world this week. Don't forget, you will be able to catch up with all your regional GB2RS news by listening out on the air on Sunday. Now, if you don't know who's doing it, you can track down your local GB2RS news reader on the air by heading across to the TX Factor website. We've got a PDF file up there of all the broadcasters and what time they're on the air and where they're doing it. Check out txfactor.co. Dot UK. Click on the GB2RS News tab and you can grab an up-to-date PDF of all those broadcasters. Just to remind you as well, the deadline for any GB2RS News items is 10am sharp on Thursday mornings, although we do prefer information as far in advance as is possible. And news should only be sent to radcom at rsgb.org.uk. I'm Mike Marsh, G1IAR, reporting with the TX News weekly podcast of GB2RS. We will be back here next week. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time around with the latest update of GB2RS News. Dit is inmiddels zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Alle mail is welkom op het adres x xdvme Dat is ook te vinden rechts bovenaan de webpagina van de uitzending in www.p0ete.nl. De Daily Minutes toont iedere dag weer aan de hand van schokkende voorbeelden hoe een hobby mensenlevens kan veranderen. De internetfaciliteiten en studio hardware voor Daily Minutes worden gesponsord door 70 megahertzshop.nl. 70 mhzshop.nl.
En microfoon naar de toer.